Crazy things happen when hip hop and video games come together. From Snoop Dogg karate kicking people's heads off, to Action Bronson running away from a literal ghost face killer. But to me, the best is when these two worlds come together in music. So today we're gonna look at some of the best hip hop tracks to use video game samples and how these amazing beats were actually made. So let's start with the famous one, how Drake made the song KMT. Demon just got out of can. I gave my bro an advance. And sampled a song from a Sonic game. So let's break down how this beat was made. But before we do, it would really mean a lot if you hit like and subscribe. If you ever get tired of my videos, just feel free to unsubscribe, but it really does help me out. All right, back to the beat. So the part of the sample that was used was the beginning part of this Sonic song. Now making a beat out of a sample like this would have been hard. If we look at a rough translation of the music from this song, there's just a lot going on. A sample like this would probably be too busy and too complicated for a rap beat. So the producers of this beat, Ness and Chef Pascal, did something really smart. The first thing they did was they slowed the sample down. What this does is it takes all the music and stretches it out, making the sample less busy and more usable for a rap beat. Then they pitch the sample down 14 semitones. When you stretch a sample out to be this slow, pitching it down as well afterwards can help it sound better. Now after this, they started chopping the sample up, but they placed their chops in a very particular way. You can hear the sample itself is made up of a lot of string stabs. So what the producers did was they placed a chop on every single stab. This allowed them to easily create their own pattern with their own rhythm. So after making the chops, they played the exact same notes in the exact same order, but in a much more simple rhythm like so. Then they added their own drums and sounds on top. Now one extra step that they took was to create a switch up every four bars. So instead of having the exact same loop play over and over again, they took this part of the sample, and they placed a couple extra chops, one part way through this first long note, and the second at the beginning of this note. And they used these extra chops for the tail end of their fourth bar so the beat wouldn't sound as repetitive. And that is pretty much how this beat was made. A pretty smart technique here to take a busy, complex sample and really simplify it to make it usable for a rap beat. And by the way, if you wanna learn how to make beats like this, I want to let you know about my online beat making program, Better Beat Maker. It's made for people who don't have any background in music, but still wanna learn how to make amazing sounding beats. Many people who've tried all the other courses out there have said that this is the best program that they've ever tried. Spots are limited, so make sure you apply today if you're interested. The link is in the description box below if you wanna check it out after this video. Now the next beat that we're gonna look at absolutely shocked me. It's a song I've probably heard hundreds of times that actually uses a video game sample that I've heard thousands of times, but I just never put two and two together. The song we're gonna look at is Elevators by Outkast. Which samples this sound that you've probably heard a million times. The Mario coin sound effect. I was shocked when I read this, but I even looked it up on a Wikipedia and sure enough, it's there. Now you might not have heard it so easily in the actual song, so let me just play the instrumental here. <laughs> that cool sound that you hear in the background is apparently the Mario coin sound, so let's break down how this was done. First, I'll load up the Mario coin sound into my sampler here. And what the producer's organized noise did was start by stretching the entire sample and pitching it down. Then they chopped up the two notes from the Mario coin sound 
and they took the second note and pitched that up two semitones. After we add some EQ to the entire sample and some delay, here is what we get. Now I did my best to isolate the sound from the Outcast song, and what I'll do is open up a tool that lets you analyze the notes in your sample. This is a really helpful tool, so if you want a full tutorial of how you can use this when you make beats, a link to this video is in the corner. Anyways, here is what the analysis shows us when we play the sound from Elevators. We have those two bright notes showing up. Now when I play the Mario Coin sound effect that I just manipulated, it's pretty identical. If I play them at the exact same time, you can see we have a pretty close overlap. So based on this, it looks like this is true. That sound effect in Elevators by Outkast is in fact the Mario Coin sound effect. Amazing. Now the next beat we're gonna look at is really impressive. The way the sample is used is really sophisticated and there are a lot of advanced techniques happening in this beat. The song is A Run Up On Me by XXXTentacion. which samples the Sega game, Dracula. Now the first part of this beat is pretty straightforward. The sample is slowed down and pitched down eight semitones. Then the producers use this large piece of the sample for the very first part of the beat. Nothing too complicated so far, but the producers Grouchy Van Gogh and Willy G do some impressive sampling techniques after this. What they do is they take an entirely different part of the sample and they re-stretch and re-pitch it again to entirely different amounts, up five semitones this time. Then after this, there is a yet another switch up where they take another part of the sample and re-pitch it yet again up another 12 semitones. And it's sped up to be 27% of the original sample. This is really impressive to me. Typically this amount of re-stretching and re-pitching all at different amounts would rarely be possible. I think it's just amazing that the producers even had this idea. In fact, there's even a fourth part of the sample used, which is also re-pitched and re-stretched once again. With most samples, this just would not be possible. The reason why this works is if you look at the sample that was used here, it's very open. We don't have overly dense full parts. Whereas if we compare this to the first sample that we looked at from Sonic, there's just so much more going on. Way too busy, way too much going on, and really unsampleable. So if you also want to make a beat using samples that has tons of switch-ups like this, I recommend using something that isn't as full and complex. Now having said that, if sampling is just something that you struggle with overall, I do have a full video where I show you how to start sampling. That video should be showing up next to me along with a link to Better Beat Maker, my full online beat making program. Leave a comment down below if you have a favorite beat that uses a video game sample. I may do a part two to this video and your help would be welcomed if I do. Again, hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next week.